Today, we're going to talk about other than honorable discharges and when you qualify for VA benefits. I know there's some guys out there who have OTHs and you've been told either don't bother applying, American Legion told you you don't qualify, or you got a decision letter from the VA saying your service isn't honorable enough for VA disability benefits. Listen, guys, I'm here to tell you that the VA fucks this up a lot. They tell guys that they aren't eligible for VA benefits when they are. Just because you have an OTH doesn't mean you're ineligible for VA disability benefits. That's a common myth that's perpetuating throughout the veteran community, and it's not true. The reality of it is when it comes to certain discharges like other than honorable or a bad conduct discharge due to a special court martial, the VA is supposed to determine whether or not your service is honorable for VA disability benefits. And what they're supposed to do, and they almost never do, are look at 11 different factors or what's called regulatory and statutory bars. Now, I'm just going to refer to them as factors for simplicity. Uh, this stuff could get pretty complicated, guys. So I'm just trying to give you enough information that you have some hope that, yes, you are eligible for VA disability benefits. Don't give up on this, guys. I just made a veteran eligible for VA disability benefits. It took us seven years to get there, but he was kicked out of the Marine Corps, combat veteran, came home, smoked a joint, kicked out of the military with OTH, and fair enough, applied for disability benefits, received a decision saying drug use is a bar to VA benefits, you're denied your claim. Drug use is not a bar to VA benefits, guys. I'm about to talk about what is a bar, but just know in this scenario, we fought this. We took it to a judge. Yeah, it took five years, but now he is eligible for VA benefits, including disability benefits. Anyways, let's get into these 11 different factors or the bars. So if you fall into one of these 11 factors or bars, you are disqualified from receiving VA disability benefits. At the end of this video, I'm going to talk about one exception that will remove that bar, so stick around to the end. Bar is if you are discharged by reason of sentence of a general court martial. Now, this, this bar actually requires that you were convicted by a general court martial. And also, pay attention to the words general court martial. This is something the VA fucks up all the time. Maybe you were discharged because of a special or summary court martial. There's different types of court martials. The bar only applies to guys who have a discharge due to a general court martial. So check your military records, check your DD-214, see what type of court martial you had. If it is not a general court martial, then you might have an argument with the VA. You're discharged on the basis that you're a conscientious objector. Essentially what this means is you're refusing to put on a uniform due to moral grounds. This isn't a common reason for discharge anymore. It was during the Vietnam era, uh, not so much anymore. If this applies to you, there's not much of a defense except the exception I'll discuss at the end. Discharge for being a deserter. A deserter means you went AWOL and you don't have the intent of ever returning. The key here is that you're actually discharged due to desertion and not another offense. All right, this next one's a little bit different. It's not quite desertion, but if you're discharged under other than honorable conditions for being AWOL for more than a continuous period of 180 days, you're barred from VA benefits. Now, the VA makes a ton of mistakes with this bar to VA benefits. For one, it has to be a continuous period of 180 days. So if you were AWOL for 30 days here, came back, went AWOL again for another 30 days, that doesn't count. It has to be 180 continuous days. Second of all, there is a, a defense built into this. So 
if you could show compelling circumstances of why you were missing for that 180 days, that removes the bar. So the statute gives examples of what's compelling circumstances and it states you know, family obligations or emergencies. It also instructs the VA to take into account the person's age and maturity, whether or not they're a combat veteran. So let me tell you a story to kind of illustrate this exception to the being AWOL for more than 180 days. I had this client that lived with his, before he joined the military, he lived with his little brother, who was about 10 years younger than him, and his mom. Dad was not in the picture. So to make ends meet, client at the age of like 18 or 19 joins the army during the height of the Vietnam War. He, of course, got put into the infantry and sent to Vietnam, saw heavy combat, came back, was suffering some mental health issues, gets some leave, so he goes to see his mom and his little brother. When he gets there, he finds out that his mom has moved in with this guy she's dating. The little brother says, hey, mom's boyfriend has been beating me, beating mom. So that, you know, kicks this guy's ass, throws him out of the house. And the guy on his way out says, I know you have to go back to the army. As soon as you go back to the army, I'm coming to kill your family. So client veteran doesn't go back after leave, stays AWOL for about six months because he was afraid this guy really would come back and kill his family. He eventually goes back to the Army, turns himself to the MPs, gets discharged with OTH. Now, he's a combat vet, saw a lot of shit, suffering from severe PTSD, some Agent Orange-related conditions, really deserving of disability benefits. But the VA denied him, saying you were absent without leave more than 180 days. He came to see me. We argued there was compelling circumstances to protect his family. The judge agreed, and she made him eligible VA benefits, got his 100%. So the point of this story, guys, is one to show you the exception to being 180 days AWOL, uh, but also that don't give up. It's, don't give up if you OTH. Get help if you need it, but I'm telling you, the VA probably made a mistake or you have some sort of defense. Anyways, let's move on. Next, uh, if you're an officer who resigned for the good of service, it's a bar to VA benefits. The common mistake the VA makes here is if you're an enlisted personnel who resigns for the good of service, that doesn't count. It only applies to officers. This last bar is something I've never encountered. Quite frankly, I, I can't even find case law interpreting it, but we'll put it up here. If this applies to you, you know, give me a buzz. Let's talk about it and let's see if I can help you out with it. And this bar is discharge of any individual during a period of hostilities as an alien. Again, not really sure what that means. Can't find an interpretation of it. I won't worry too much about this one. Unless it applies to you, then give me a call. All right, next bar. Accepting an undesirable discharge to escape a trial by a general court-martial. Again, pay attention to the words general court-martial. If you accepted a discharge in lieu of a special court-martial, that doesn't count. So again, check your DD-214, check your, your military personnel file, see what type of court-martial you actually had. Next one, probably doesn't apply to a whole lot of you. Mutiny or spying, if uh, this does apply to you, I wish you the best of luck. You might have a little trouble uh, becoming eligible for VA benefits. A offense involving moral turpitude. This is one that has a little bit of wiggle room. So the statute says generally a conviction of a felony is exam. They give that as an example of what moral turpitude is. But I'm telling you, the regional offices... Uh, interpret it differently everywhere. So let's say um, your vet got kicked out for smoking weed. You may get a older regional office employee in Alabama saying, yeah, smoking weed, that's moral turpitude. Whereas maybe you get a younger guy in California 
who says that's not moral turpitude. So it, it's interpreted differently depending on what regional office you are. It's supposed to be a serious offense. If this applies to you, I, I recommend getting representation. It could be pretty complicated, um, and you really want to give yourself the best shot at this. The next one is the most common reason that the VA bars you from disability benefits. Willful and persistent misconduct. Now, a couple things. We're not going to get into a whole lot about willful and persistent misconduct. Just know that it has to be both willful and persistent. So if you have one instance of misconduct, it's probably not persistent. But trust me, the VA will still say it's persistent. And it has to be willful. So a good argument that it's not willful, maybe you're suffering from a mental health condition at the time. Uh, that's the reason you're smoking marijuana. That could help argue that it, it's not willful. Again, this whole area could get very complicated. It's too in-depth for this video. Just know that there are arguments to be made about what is willful and persistent misconduct. Get yourself a VA accredited agent or attorney and get help with that. The last one is, uh, isn't really applied much anymore, but if you're discharged due to homosexual acts. Now, if you're discharged due to homosexual acts combined with like a sexual assault, then that might be a reason the VA bans you, but just for being homosexual, if you're discharged, you got to fight that. That's, that's not a valid reason to ban you from VA disability benefits. So that's it, guys. If you fall into one of those 11 bars, then unfortunately you might not have uh, much of an argument. There is one sort of big exception to all 11 of these bars if you're able to meet it then that will remove the bar. And that's the insanity exception. Again, this topic could get really in depth. Just know that the VA's definition of insanity is not the same as the criminal defense definition. In fact, the Court of Appeals of Veterans Claims called the definition less than clear. Just know this, if you had some sort of mental health condition at the time of the offense, the, the mental health condition and the offense only have to be related. If you just had a mental health condition during the time of the offense, you may have an argument that you were insane per the VA's definition, not medically insane, VA's definition of insane. This is a tough argument to win, guys. You're going to need a medical opinion, and you really need somebody who understands VA law to win this. I know it's called VA made easy, but sometimes there's certain cases that you really should and need to get help for. Lastly, guys, let's go over two more things. Another mistake the VA often makes is they ignore other periods of service. So maybe you served for four years, got out for a little bit and served again. But the VA says, no, you're not eligible for VA benefits. Well, Maybe they didn't look at both periods of service. The other option you guys may have is a discharge upgrade. Now, those could become extremely complicated. I plan on doing a video of those soon. Thanks, guys. I hope this is helpful. If you have that OTH, just don't give up. If anybody has questions, feel free to schedule some time with me. Happy to talk to you guys. Until next time, guys, remember, you have the power to change your VA claim.